All right, folks, so <clears throat> the job today is to refresh the transmission on this beautiful X5M. As you probably have seen in the channel, uh, the engine has been rebuilt. First startup was last week, and uh, we do have a few things to get sorted still. But without further ado, I want to get the gearbox service, the automatic transmission service. Uh, so that's why we bought this nice ZF uh, transmission kit. This thing does come with a few pieces, which is not just the ordinary oil drop and refuel procedure, that is a little bit more involving because, well, first of all, <clears throat> I need to say, even if you, if you check out this car online, it's gonna be describing as having a six HP 26 transmission, which is not the case. Uh, we know that the X5M got a six HP 28 transmission, which is, Pretty much the same as the 26, but it does have some reinforced uh, clutch packs and some other bits and pieces inside. But um, the 28s are actually based on the 26 transmission. So if you buy a service kit for the 6HP transmission, uh, 6HP 26, uh, it's going to fit. The only thing that you do have to be careful is on the normal, on the ordinary 6HP 26, you do have the oil filter. The, the fluid filter integrated in the pen, so you do have a plastic pen, and on the 28 is actually separate, so you have a metal pen, uh, and then the filter is gonna sit right above that, and uh, you're gonna be able to see that in the video, but I just wanna make this very clear that, yeah, maybe you're gonna get a kit that says 6 HP 26, uh, the only thing you gotta be careful is you do not want to replace that oil pen with a plastic one. And on your kit, uh, and this is the ZF kit specific that I bought for the X5, there's a gasket. Okay, so this is the oil pen gasket uh, for the transmission. You definitely wanna make sure that this comes in your kit because otherwise you're gonna have to fit. I mean, you don't wanna have to refit the same gasket because it's just a nonsense. So yeah, other than the gasket, the kit comes with the filter. This is the fluid filter. Uh, it does come with a mechatronics uh, how do I open this? It comes with a metacatronic sleeve, so that thing is going to be uh, replaced as well. Uh, what else? What else? It comes with uh, it comes with the two new magnets. So those are the magnets that sit on the bottom of the pen. If you do have any debris floating around in the transmission fluid, they're going to be caught up by these magnets. Replace them as well. And most importantly, now, not really on this car. I've been driving this car for about three days. It does shift very nicely. Uh, in M mode, it actually, it's a little bit brutal. When the gear shifts, you can, you can feel a little bit of a clunk. <coughs> not much to worry about, because if you're just driving around in the city, uh, <coughs> it feels just a normal automatic transmission. Really fast though, there's no comparison between this transmission and a normal 6 HP 26, all right? When you, when you touch the pedal shifts, it change gear instantly, all right? It even feels a little bit like a DCT transmission, in my opinion. But either way, so you do have the bridge seal or the, I don't know what, what, what the heck is that called, but it's the two square seals that goes in between the mechatronics and the transmission body. So in this service, we are going to drop the mechatronics units to replace these guys and these guys, okay? These are also very important to be replaced. Why? Because they, not only they perish over time, but these are rubber. You're gonna be able to see, these are like tubes. They just sit in between the channels, between the mechatronics and the, uh, and the transmission body. And once we remove the mechatronics and we compare with the old ones, you see that when we put the new ones in, these are gonna be sitting probably about, I would say between one to two mil, uh, below the surface of the transmission, and this is what you want, because the, the mechatronics is going to sit on, on, on top, or I would say right below it, and it's gonna squeeze the thing in, and that's how you're going to seal. So over time, these things perish, and they get like kind of a plastic, they get hard, the rubber gets hard, and it doesn't seal as much. So that's when you start to feel the shifts are getting a little bit compromised. And uh, for this being the same as the 6HP26, you have the two short tubes. You got another one that is a little bit bigger and you got the fourth one, which is longer. Uh, you can choose to buy this kit as a complete kit and it does come with the ZF Life 
Lifeguard 6, I think it is. Uh, but I'm in Australia. I bought this kit from the US and uh, it wouldn't make any sense to get shipped seven or eight liters of fluid down here. I would probably pay more than it costs to buy the whole fluid here. Uh, so what I decided to do is I decided to not use the ZF fluid and use something that I have used in BMW before. Uh, and that's the paint rife. And I have used this in the past on my wife's uh, X5. She does have an old version of a there's the three liter diesel X5. It had a bit, of a, a bit of an issue on the gearbox when I when we first bought the car, and I I've done exactly the same service that we've done doing here on the X5M today, and I used this fluid, and the car has been beautiful ever since. It's been like three years, three three or four years. So yeah, this only costs about sixty dollars. $60 for the bottle and that's four liters so we're gonna have eight liters all together this should be more than enough to complete the service so <clears throat> all right without further ado let's get the car in the air and start the work Okay, there we go. Beautiful 6 HP 28X uh, transmission. Uh, as you can see, this is a metal pen. You don't want to be replacing these with a plastic because this is just, that's, that's the way that it dissipates the heat. It's one of the ways it dissipates the heat is actually through the aluminum fins. Uh, what I do like about this one is that differently than the 5 series or the 3 series, you do have plenty of room around to do the service. Uh, basically, what you're gonna have to worry about uh, is the drain plug and the fuel plug. This is the fuel plug right there. Uh, and you're gonna have to undo all the bolts around it. Uh, that's not, even the front thing, yeah, you don't really have to remove this. This can stay there as long as you have a long uh, torque speed. That should be all good. Uh, but we are not doing the service today. Okay, this is what I wanna tell and this is gonna be the tip number one. Uh, when doing the transmission, service like this one is quite involving because you're gonna have to drop the mechatronics unit uh, if there is one bit of advice that i want to give you i don't know how dirty or how messy of a person you are but it's late nights what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drop the oil and leave it overnight because all the fluid is gonna be dripping on top of it if you if you let it drip for an hour or two still even though it's gonna be dripping overnight you're gonna see tomorrow when we're dropping the thing down how much fluid is gonna be contained on the inside. So the more then you can drain out of the whole unit before you dismantle it, the better it is. The lighter is gonna be as well because the drain, the drain plug isn't really on the highest point, is, uh, I mean, on the lowest point. So even after you finish removing all the fluid, there's still gonna be some in the pan and then in the oil pan, and that's gonna make the pan be a little bit heavier than normal. So um, either way, let's crank this thing open, let it drain overnight, and we're gonna be back here tomorrow to keep this thing. <clears throat> now, something that we do have to keep in mind is that it's a bit of common sense, but not many people know that. Every time that you're gonna do this, <clears throat> before you remove the drain plug, always remove the fill-up plug first. Why? Because We've got the correct tools. Most people are gonna try to do this just with normal uh, Allen keys or Allen wrench, whatever. And these fill-up plugs sometimes could be pretty tight. So <laughs> I have seen cases where somebody, some people just drain the whole transmission fluid and then they were unable to open the fill-up plug and they end up with a transmission without any fluid in it. So that's the reason why uh, the fill-up plug is an Allen key number eight. We're gonna have to Crack this guy open. <coughs> there you go. That's open. And the drain plug is an Allen key number five. This is a lot smaller, so yeah. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> there you go, let's see how this fluid looks. I have no clue whether this has been replaced before or not, but with a lifetime 
fluid stick it in there. I doubt that it has been replaced. It looks dark. Yeah, it looks dark. <laughs> That's what I can say. I was expecting it to be a little bit darker, to be honest, but yeah, let it drain, let it drain. Okay, good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you are. We are in Sydney and it's good morning. Now, this thing was uh, dripping overnight and it is still dripping a tiny bit, so I don't think we're gonna have to be I don't think we're going to be able to take any more fluid from this at this at this stage. So we're going to put the sump bolts back in. We're not going to tie it. Uh, we're going to take the oil thing our way because we are not going to uh, use it just as of now. But we are going to keep this thing very close by because once once this pin comes off. I can guarantee you there's gonna be heaps of uh, fluid still inside, especially sitting here underneath. So I heard that you can actually remove most of the bolts and leave the front ones. And as this uh, pin tilts to the back, you're gonna be able to take some more fluid out of the sump bolts. I don't know, let's see if that's the case. Or if not, for now, we're just gonna remove uh, the Torx bolts and see how it goes. Already, so the bolt out T40. What I'm gonna do, which is something I, I usually do, I don't like to go power too straight away, so I am gonna use just a manual ratchet. I'm going to undo all the bolts to feel the tension on them. I think these are, as far as I remember, nine Newton meters each. So you don't have to torque them too tight. And then I go on with the power tool, because otherwise you're gonna spend two or three days just taking these bolts off. You can probably tell, it's a bit of a big piece. You sit there, please. Now there's definitely a lot of oil in here. I can feel, I can feel the weight of it just moving and splashing around inside of the pen. Just be careful not to drop this thing too quickly because otherwise yeah, the oil is not gonna come out of the sump, it's gonna come through the top and you have a shower. Unwanted shower. Beautiful. Beautiful. The main thing about working on these cars, I need to say, uh, is patience. Definitely patient. Do not rush to get things done or, or, or overlook things because if you do that, that's when things go sour and you could eventually just come up with a massive uh, issue on something else or you could damage some of the components or you could damage some parts and that is definitely something you don't want because oh, BMW parts are not cheap and especially for us here in Australia they're very hard to get. Well, everything we, we buy from the States. It just takes a couple of weeks to arrive. So if you're in a rush, big no-no. <clears throat> well, now I'm gonna tell you what the plan is and then you're gonna see for yourself what's gonna happen because not every time Things go according to plan. Uh, I'm gonna drop this thing down a little bit and I'm gonna empty the remaining oil or the remaining fluid from inside. 
into the oil uh, container. But even though that's, that's been draining overnight, I'm pretty sure there's still gonna be a little bit of uh, fluid dripping. So we need to quickly move the tray underneath of the car. Oh, there goes one bolt. Uh, just to catch any remaining of the fluid, because if I can complete this without making a big mess, I'll be very happy. Like, very, very happy. Uh, there you go. Okay, and the last bolt comes out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is a beautiful mechatronic unit. There's about half a litre of oil inside. That's about it. Now, this uses a rubber gasket. Strange. It's definitely not what I was expecting to find. But... Not a big deal, to be honest. Let me move this thing and see. Okay. And now that is our mechatronics unit. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can, but without obviously letting the oil drip on top of the camera. I think that should be enough. Good, good. Uh, I don't know how much more oil is going to drip, but I have a feeling that once I got this filter out, I'm gonna get splashed. So, uh, I'm going to prevent myself and protect myself. What that happening? Okay, I've got the big dripping tray in there, and let's take the future out. Oh, there we go. Ugh. 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 Yes, it's full of oil, and the seal was stuck inside. It's all right. Like, again, not a big deal. How do you want to do a transmission service and don't get yourself covered in oil? It doesn't really... So we can work on the mechatronics unit. Yeah, this is all nice and clean. Now my question is... Why the new gasket is a paper gasket and the one that I'm taking out is a rubber slash metal gasket. Because that seems to me to be a little bit more kind of a heavy duty thing. I could be wrong, but either way. Okay, now we're gonna have to remove the mechatronics unit and we do have to pay very close attention. Oops, I just kick it to this little lever right here. This is how you engage the neutral whenever the car is, is off or if you've got no battery or if you can't start the car and you have, you have to force it in neutral. You actually have these little bolts on the side of the transmission. It's a, I think it's a number five Allen key or something. And you tie this thing up. This is gonna push the lever up and the car is gonna be going in neutral. So you can roll it back and forth. But that little arm sits right at the at the middle here on this piston. So we're gonna drop the mechatronics unit. Whenever we're putting this back in, we definitely have to pay attention and make sure that this is gonna be sitting where it is right now. Otherwise, you're gonna have faults. Uh, the thing is not gonna work properly. You're gonna get errors and you're gonna have to drop the pan again, drain the oil and blah, 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 go through everything. So just be careful when you're doing everything and go step by step. If you got a manual, you follow the manual. If you wanna do following the video, just follow the video. But again, as I say, with BMW, you have to be patient. You have to be patient 
and you can rush through things. Uh, yeah, I can see that the oil filter seal is just sitting in there. That's all right. We're gonna have to use a pry bar or a little pick tool just to to get it out. Well, now for the next step, what we're gonna have to do is uh, you disconnect the plug for the transmission. So there's a there's a pin on the side of the plug. What we need to do is we need to turn that pin anti-clockwise. And what that's going to do is is going to free the main ah there you go the main connector for the transmission. And when that comes out, the main seal comes out too. And Yeah, okay, that's done. Now, we're gonna do this uh, lock here. So why we're gonna do this lock is because this is what actually locks the, the tube in place. So once we undo this, now we should be able to pry it out with a bar and get that little tube out of the way. Okay, so it turns out that I've been fighting with this thing a lot. What it feels is like the bottom is loose, but the top is not. Uh, and what I think it is, is because this thing has been here for probably 12 or so years. But as long as you do remove the lock and the lock has been pulled down, this thing should come out. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. See, these, these seals were probably completely dry and that's why they just got jammed in place and it's pretty hard to remove. I did damage the part, trying to pry it out, but who cares? We're gonna be putting a new one of these anyway, so not much of a drama. Uh, something you do have to <coughs> take note is that, see how there's an indent in the middle here and this is for the electrical plug to go back in the correct uh, place. So when you put the new one back in, just make sure you wiggle to the sides uh, so the new one goes back in the same place. So now that this thing is off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove <coughs> all the T40 bolts and we're gonna drop the entire mechatronics unit. Now basically what you're gonna do, actually it's not basically, it is what you want to do. Uh, you need to remove all the T40 bolts, but can you see you got like hundreds of bolts in here? Not hundreds, but thousands of them. Uh, some of them got a tapered head, some of them got a kind of a square head. So these are the ones that you need to remove. Okay, there are quite a few of them around, especially here at the back. Uh, once you remove them all, the mechatronics is going to just drop. Again, keep a close eye on these. Uh, not when you remove one, but when you put it back in, because these shafts have to align exactly with the other axle that runs the neutral uh, thing. So let's start wrenching. Now it is not uncommon as well to find one of these bolts to be loose. And it did happen to a, it was a 5 series, it was a 530i I was working on. And I went out to remove one of these bolts and it was actually off. It was probably two or three mil uh, lower from the case. And it was, it probably got loose somehow. I have no idea how, but either way. So you just gotta be careful and make sure that you put them all back the same way that they got in. Uh, and I believe some of these bolts, I think the rear ones are actually shorter than the others because they just go into the plastic. Oh, see, these are the shorter ones because they are holding the, the solenoid valves in place. But we are not gonna get that thing apart. Not a chance, not today. Because uh, these, these solenoids can be replaced, all right? and. Uh, on this transmission, which is a 6HP28, they don't, they don't really fail much. 
Uh, but the good thing about this transmission is like it's very easy to get service and parts for them. So whether you got one day it's going bad or it's already gone bad, it's not very hard to find parts for it. Okay, now my hands are getting greasy and I need to get a towel. <coughs> See, no matter how long you leave this thing draining overnight, there's always going to be fluid. You take, like, what did I take? I took the future out and there was a lot of fluid coming out. What I might do, I'm going to undo, I'm going to break them loose first. See, this, this is roughly where the tubes, the little uh, rubber tubes sit. So, these guys are pressing the tube up and they have to be put back. Very precisely, because otherwise, if you if you don't put the tubes back in correctly, or if you mix them up, because obviously two of them are shorter, two of them are short, and then you got a little bit longer one, and then you have the long one that goes on the side. Like honestly, you can't you can't screw up. You can't like you gotta be pretty. Uh, how should I say? You gotta really not be paying attention to put those things on the wrong order because they're gonna be sticking out a lot, like really a lot. Um, now at this stage, this should be roughly about to drop. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of the bolts back in, which is the rear ones for the solenoid body just in case, because if this thing comes loose, I don't want it to just suddenly drop into the oil pan. Because that could happen and that wouldn't be fun at all. Okay, clean, clean, clean. There we go. This guy, this guy is loose. What else, what else, what else? I think that's it. I think that's it. So let's see. Let me get this guy out first. Now another thing that's very important is when you're doing specifically this job, when you, you, when you are about to lower the mechatronic unit, uh, make sure you lay some cardboard or something flat on a very clean area because once you take this off the car there's going to be coming out of the oil as well and uh, you don't want to be running around with oil dripping all over your place. So we do have a bit of a cardboard laying ready right next to where the car is. So <coughs> again the plan is to take this nice and oh, I forgot one. Nice and clean and then move this whole thing onto that cardboard. But as we all know, things not always go according to plan. All right, have a look on this. See how much oil is dropping? At the moment that I lose on these boats, what happened is those little pipes, the rubber pipes that press against the, the case, they're coming loose and all the oil is dropping, possibly out of the clutch pack or, or maybe the torque converter, I'm not too sure about. That's why you need to have a dripping plate ready right under the car because as I move this thing loose, actually, let me wiggle, 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 yeah. Now oh, it's this guy here. See how he's dropping? Yeah. There's a lot of oil inside of the transmission still, even though we let it play overnight. The torque converter is full, the clutch pack should have some oil still, all the solenoids got fluid oil, I keep saying oil, it's not oil, it's fluid. That's the same, who okay. cares? It's liquid. And the liquid makes a mess. Let it drip, let it drip a little bit. And then we get back onto it. Oh, 
the truth is, this thing is never going to stop dripping oil. And I don't have the whole afternoon, so the best thing I can do is uh, keep the dripping plate under the car. Um, all right, let's go for it. Three, two, one, let's go for it. Now the last bolt is very hard to remove. Uh, all right, here it comes. Uh, uh, it's full of oil, as we would expect. And ta-da! One of the seals came out on the mechatronics, and it was supposed to be here. So. My, this thing, like, the filter's got a 2010 date on it, so my guess, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, is that this is the stock filter and uh, probably, probably fluid as well from the car, 160,000 kilometers. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now let's let it drip a little bit more. Now we're going to replace those seals and... Uh, these are the ones that we're looking at replacing, okay? See how they are completely flush with the case? That wasn't supposed to be like that. Actually, well, that thing's been there for 160,000 case. Was that 12, 12 years? So when we stick the new one in, you're gonna be able to see that they're gonna be sitting slightly lower, probably a mil or, or 1.5 mil from the case. And you see that. Now let's see what the seal look like. This one is... Oh, that is broken too. That is broken too. Or it's just, maybe it's just seized in there. See, these were supposed to be one piece. Yeah, it's just sitting in there. Uh, so yeah, this guy just creams in there. And these are the little tubes that I mentioned earlier. So <clears throat> when you're doing them up, just make sure you don't damage any, any of the aluminum around. The seals, we don't really care because we're going to be replacing them. But you don't want to use anything that's too sharp or, or, or something that could risk uh, damaging any of these surfaces. Especially these main one, these big one, because this one doesn't have any gaskets on it. It just seals, it just seals as it sits flush. Uh, these two have the gaskets, these four have the gasket, but not these main ones, so just be careful. Oh, it's got me. There you go. You got the first one out, and that's obviously one of the short ones. The two in the middle of the short ones, the one uh, to the left or, or to the right, whatever a little bit longer. See, these two are the small ones. These two are the same size. This one is slightly bigger. Now, it's coming out pretty easily, I must say. I have done these in the car that they were just completely stuffed up. I was really stuck in there. Okay, this one, now see compared to the other one, how it's a little bit longer. And the last one is the longest one. Come on, I, I, fly, I had a pick, I had a better pick to do this job. 
I just forgot to bring it with me today. Like I'm not in my, I'm not at home. I'm not in my place. This is a garage that I rented out just to do the job. Uh, he's a friend's garage. Whenever he's not using, uh, I just pay him. I give him a couple of beer cases and that I can work. Oh, there you go. So this is the longest one on the side. And that's it. That's pretty much what we've got to replace. Uh, <clears throat> The seal for the filter was actually here and didn't come out, so I have to remove this guy. I'm just gonna get a pick and remove it without damaging the surface. Again, you do not want to damage any of these surfaces. Um, well, that's it. Let's put the new seals back in. Mechatronics go back in and bolt everything back on, put the fluid and let's go for a drive because I'm looking forward to driving this thing. Recording. Okay, so now it's time to start putting everything back together. And uh, what we're gonna do first are the four little tubes. Um, again, you have three different sizes. You have the, yes. You have the two ones that have the same size and these guys are the first and the second, if you count from the middle. Uh, what I like to do is you just touch a little bit on the oil and just put a slight thin bit of oil in it and you press it. And it's gonna go up almost all the way. See how it's sticking out a little bit? Then you do the same for the second one. All the way. Here. Now you're gonna do the same for the third and the fourth one. So a little bit up just a bit. Press it. Now it's all the way in. And the last one. You press it, it goes all the way in. Now this little bit that is sticking out is what's, oh yeah, more oil coming out. See, I told you, like we've been playing with this thing for over an hour now. It has drained overnight, <coughs> and it's still got oil inside. But it's all good. Uh, let's open up the little square one. Now this one goes at the front, and uh, it actually just bites that little thing and sits in there, so not much you should worry about. As with any single, every single seal, I like to just make sure that it's nice and wet and press it in. And that it sits. So touch it again a little bit to make sure it's nice and wet. And it's just gonna sit there. Now, like see, it's, it's basically pretty simple and pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do now is gonna grab the mechatronics, bring it back here and put it up and always remembering to watch for this lever here. These have to come right in the middle of the shaft, uh, otherwise it's not gonna work properly. Okay, now to put the mechatronics back in place, uh, this is how I like to do it. Again, there is no right or wrong way of doing it. Uh, it's just the way that I like doing it. One hand, I'm gonna be holding it again. If you have a friend or someone, this is a really good time to give them a call or, or, or get them in. But you just gotta make sure that you align this bit properly with the shaft. And it is aligned, beautiful. So I have two or three bolts that I keep handy here. And I'm just gonna put them back in, in order to support the weight of the mechatronics. So if I have to drop them a bit, they are going to be sitting on those screws. And I don't have to uh, force too much with my hands. No, that one doesn't want to go. Maybe this one. No, this one doesn't want to go as well. Okay, that's rubbish. 
if you mess around with the bolts, if you drop the bolts, just make sure you clean them. You give them a really nice clean before you attempt to put them back in. And see, that one doesn't want to go as well. Ah, it's just giving me a hard time, man. Ah. This one went in? Yeah, no, it didn't go. Oh. Ah. Yeah, now it went that through. Ah. Ah. This is a good time to have a friend handy. I could definitely use another person here right now to help. Now, we are not talking the bolts. We're just putting them in and treading it in a little bit so they can support the mechatronics unit and we don't have to keep holding them in place by hands. Now, there are a few bolts that I dropped on the floor. Again, you're just going to have to thoroughly clean them, blow some air, maybe some of the greaser. You're just going to make sure you clean them before they go back into the transmission because you don't want to bring any dirt in here, not at all. Okay, so we're going to talk them up. And uh, as with most of the parts, uh, the best way to do it is from the inside out. So we've got a total of uh, 12, 12 bolts, three of them being the shorter ones, they go at the back. I'm not very concerned about those ones, I am a little bit concerned about the ones right at the front because that's the bit where you don't have a seal in place and uh, you definitely want to make sure that that sits properly because if it doesn't, uh, we're going to have a transmission fault, most likely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them all up so the mechatronics sit on its place and then I'm going to slowly torque them up to spec which is about 8 newton meters plus 1 newton meter to recheck. See I'm torquing them by hand and this should ensure that the seals are being squeezed up properly. You don't want to talk one of the bolts and then talk the other one on the other side and then uh, it's, it's just a bit messy in my opinion. Uh, so you do them by hand first and then you come back and you do them with a wrench for the second time and then you go back and you set up your proper torque and then you torque them up. You got the idea, right? So do it your own way. As long as, again, this thing has to be aligned with the shaft, all right? This shaft plate, see how it can be moved from one side to another. So whenever you bring the mechatronics back into the crankcase, into the case, I mean, you just gotta make sure that that little shaft is aligned in there and we should be good to go. So let's finish cleaning up the surface area. We're gonna put the connector sleeve at the back, press the pin back on, Clean the pen, new gaskets, uh, pop the filter in, and everything goes back in there. Beautiful. All right, now it's time to put back the little sleeve tube. Uh, just remember to lube up all the seals and the O-rings because that's going to make it slide in a lot easier. That was actually the reason why it didn't come out. 
that easily in first place. But if you do loop that, it should be just a matter of clicking back into place. Now remember, there's a there's a, a, a correct position to put it back in, and this is with the lug or the the little bit facing down, which is there now. Let's see how hard this is. All right, so just side, yeah. Hey, look, oh, oh, Jesus, that's it, man. Done. It went back in straight on. No questions asked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, it went in. Now you just press the thing back in place. Very important, if this doesn't want to get in, that means that you haven't pushed this leaf back into far enough. So don't force this thing, do not try to ham it in or don't, don't, don't use force with this guy. What you do have to do is just go back in here, wiggle it side to side, try to push it back in or out, and eventually you're going to be able to just slide this back up and that's how easy it is now the next thing is the oil filter and the pen now this is pretty straightforward right it's actually harder to open this package than it is to fit the filter <laughs> and that's the filter for 9 january 2022 Beautiful. Take that thing off. It does come with a bit of a loop already, so no need to put extra oil or anything. It's already looped up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, line up in place, and press it up until it locks. And that's it. It is locked in place went up and it's done would you just stay there please all right now is the pen now for the oil pen it's uh, pretty much just like the mechatronics I'm gonna try to hold it with one place uh, put a couple of bolts in put a, a couple of screws in Ooh, down. That's the other way around, mate. What are you doing? This is the rear. <laughs> so, yep, as I was saying, I'm going to try to hold it up with one hand and then put the screws with the other. Now, you do have to be very careful because the gasket sits in here and you don't want to damage it or you don't want to misplace it. Uh, so, first, bolt goes in. It's going to be holding that in place. Now I'm going to put the second bolt in here and I can see the gasket is there. So These actually have to be tightened up in a crisscross pattern. So you're going to have to do one on the side, another one on the other side and just, ooh, there we go. One by one. Now is the time to plug back the transmission cable. This guy goes in a certain way that it only plugs in uh, like that. So now it's in, what you gotta do is you grab the lock and you twist it clockwise. And 
and that's it. It's locked. Locked in place. Beautifully. Next, we're going to open up the fuel plug, which is right on the side here. And we're going to start pumping some fluid until it drips. This is the first step. Now, I have started the car. Okay, so chop chop, let's wrap it up and um, just took the car for a drive. We've been driving around for about 10 minutes. Uh, the first five minutes was to warm up the engine and the second, uh, the second part of the five minutes uh, was driving it hard. I must tell you this, I can notice the difference straight away. All right? the, the gears change a lot smoother and uh, very precise so i'm happy with the results there's no more clunking between second and third gear which was uh, happening before uh it's just a good overall results now i do want to apologize because ever since i made that mess with the with the with the oil line there was oil everywhere in the garage and i ended up forgetting to press record on the last bit of the fill up procedure but that is uh, pretty straightforward as i put on the lines before uh, basically with the engine off you have to fill up the first six liters six and a half liters of uh, transmission fluid or so and then you put the fuel plug back into the to the transmission you get into the car turn the engine on uh, go to the gears so spend about one or two minutes going through the gears or maybe a little bit more uh, why that's needed because you want to bring your transmission uh, fluid up to temperature all right, the correct, uh, the correct way to filling that up is you actually have the fluid sitting in between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and that's going to be the right volume of, of fluids. And then you remove, you, you let the engine running, okay? You don't shut off the engine. You let it run, uh, go under the car, remove the fuel plug from the transmission, and then you're going to be able to pump another two liters of uh, fluid in it. Before you turn off the engine, make sure you put the fuel plug back in because if you turn off the engine, your torque converter stops spinning and then the fluid is going to overflow back out of the engine uh, or out of the transmission. So very, very important. 
Uh, remember that with the engine running, remove the fuel plug, pump another two or two and a half liters of fluid or so. Uh, replace the fuel plug in, try to clean around a little bit and, uh, and that's it, that's done. Before you take the car for the first drive, there's another thing that is very, very important to do, which is uh, to delete all the adaptations for the transmission. I know that a few people don't do that and it's, it's just incorrect in a way because the transmission operates with pressures here and there and uh, the reason why I was getting a clunk in between the keys and it wasn't operating properly, it's I believe is because there was some uh, leaks of fluid and the pressures was not were not right. And since we serviced that, we addressed that issue. Now it's a good idea to delete all, all all the data that the ECU learned from the transmission and say that's it. You start it fresh. We have new fluid in it anyway, so. Yeah, don't forget to do that. Delete all the memory for the transmission only. Don't don't worry about the engine. And then go for a drive. Drive it for about 10 minutes. Uh, ideally, when you go back into the shop, uh, check the level again. I do recommend that you wait until the, the coolant, the, the, the fluid is in between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius. But again, do a last, do a last check and uh, that way you're going to guarantee that you are within the correct uh, fluid level. So I think that's it for today, guys. Um, I, I know that the video ended up taking about an hour or so, but that's it. It's a, it's a, it, it's a very comprehensive uh, service and uh, you can save yourself a lot of money if you, if you DIY. So um, as usual, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have liked, uh, have enjoyed the video. And uh, if you did so, please uh, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. So thank you very much and goodbye for now.